Hello everyone, I am Oral David here. Uh, welcome to Adventure Terrain Ventures. Uh, in today's video, we are going to continue our discussion on the types of traders and more specifically, we are going to talk about two more types of traders today, uh, namely the floor traders and the institutional traders. So basically, what is a floor trader or who is a floor trader? See, many years back, when much before the computerized screen-based trading got started in the Bombay Stock Exchange and not on, and also in all the other uh, stock exchanges, there used to be a trading floor, like the one you see on the picture right here. So this is a trading floor of the Bombay Stock Exchange. Uh, you used to see a big hall or a big auditorium of people you know people gathering there who are these people these are the people who are uh, the members of the stock exchange or the authorized persons who can come into the floor and trade so not everyone is allowed to come into this floor and trade so if you want to buy some shares you cannot just walk into this floor and say i want to buy these shares but only authorized people were allowed to come into this floor and they could trade with other traders. So if uh, one trader wanted to buy a stock, all he had to do is shout out that, you know, I want to buy uh, a particular stock and another person who has st the same stock to sell, he would come to him and then they would negotiate a price and then they would close a deal. So that's how the trading used to happen on the floor of the exchanges all around the world much before the screen based system started. Now, uh, you know, people used to really pounce on each other, you know, shout at the top of their voice to gain, uh, to gain you know, uh, the attention of other traders who, tra who want to trade the same stock. So uh, this is, these are the people who are called the floor traders. So anymore uh, after the screen based system came up, okay, uh, earlier days it used to be called the outcry system because you know you had to really uh, shout out uh, and then only you could get heard. <clears throat> but now after the screen based trading was started, we don't we no longer have floor traders. Okay, there are a few exchanges though which still have the floor traders, but the screen based trading uh, became even more efficient because uh, anyone around the world could uh, place a bid or an ask, you know, for a stock. That means a bid is a, a, a buying order and ask is a selling order. So what the, uh, the system would do is it would um, collect everybody's bids and, you know, uh, sort them out in such a way that the one who is willing to pay the highest would be called the best bidder. And it would collect all the asks from the various sellers and um, you know, sort it in such a way that it would the one who is offering to sell at the lowest would be called the best seller. And this information, the best buyer and the best seller would be broadcasted to the entire market on a live basis. So this is how screen-based trading got started. And now you see only such kind of quote screens. You don't see these floor traders anymore so the human element is no longer there you know it's more of just uh, electronics but then <clears throat> there are uh, some people who prefer to have the human element still you know they there are many of these traders who has, who come and say that oh i miss those days when you know we used to go onto the floor and see the emotions of the other traders and you know then take a decision whether to buy or sell uh, however, that element would be missing in the screen-based system. Uh, it has its own pros and cons though. Let's come now to what an institutional trader is. So an institutional trader is um, not an individual. So it, it clearly indicates that it is an institution. So an institution can also buy and sell stocks. An institution could be a mutual fund. It, it could be a... Uh, a, a, a hedge fund you know it could be any corporate entity which would like to buy and sell stocks in its own name now an institution can be a member of an exchange or it can trade in the exchange through another member so 
mostly these uh, institutions they would trade through a member of a stock exchange in india these institutional investors are classified into two categories the domestic institutional investors and the foreign institutional investors so the dii's or the domestic institutional investors again are uh, uh, you know the institutions like the unit trust of india the uh, and uh, so many of the mutual funds that are operating in india all these are called the domestic institutional investors who have their roots in india the institutions that have formed or uh, they have been formed in india itself then we have the foreign financial institutions or the fii's now these are the institutions which are coming from other countries they have their origin in other countries but they want to invest in india so they would have to get themselves registered in india as an fii and then only they would be allowed to actually buy and sell again we have a lot of funds and a lot of uh, hedge funds uh, you know a um, lot of these institutions even banks would come under this category who want to invest in the indian market so these people are called the institutional foreign financial institutions so both the dii's and fii's are playing a very vital role in our indian market these days and uh, the information about what they are buying and selling uh, are available on the nse and the bsc websites respectively and one can actually go and look at these and you know try to gauge where the market is heading because if institutions are buying that means there is something there it's, it's not going to be a small order it will always be a large order so uh, following an institution is not a bad idea at all and the methodology that we teach in um, here in the stock market model street uh, is again based on institutional trading so uh, whatever we call as a demand zone and a supply zone is all uh, formed because of institutional buying and institutional selling why because institutions have the capacity to move markets individuals do not have that capacity to move the markets because no individual can have such a large account size like an institution so institutions when they buy and sell they leave footprints in the on the price chart and we usually look for these footprints to see which direction are they trading in are they buying or are they selling what price are they buying in and what price are they selling at and we would like to also get on to the bandwagon and do what these institutions are doing so that's all uh, we do in the demand and supply methodology that we teach and uh, if you would like to know more about that course you know head on to the website you know that is uh, adventureterrainventures.co.in and get more information about it let me now show you a trade which i took this week in jindal steel using the same concept of demand and supply so this is a 15 minute chart of jindal steel now what you can see here is an area of demand you can see that prices were dropping it paused for a while and then it started moving up again and uh, as you can see there are two demand zones here okay this is a drop base and a rally and another rally base and another rally so this there are two levels here so this these two levels they act as you know and um, they act as and odds enhancer what we call something that will increase the probability of the trade at this point here there would be a lot of one set of buy orders how do we know that because we could see this sharp big candle here a big price up move so a lot of institutions would have been would have bought at this price at the start of this 
So that's why we call this area as an area of demand. And there would be another stack of buy orders slightly below that. So we have two stacks of buy orders. Now, what would happen if price comes down and you know uh, all these buy orders are exhausted and price comes even more? That means the sell orders were probably more, the selling was more than the buying. But don't you think that by the time it comes down to the second stack of buy orders, the sell quantities or the sell orders, the selling would have got reduced. So this second stack of buy orders have a greater possibility or a greater chance of pushing price up. So that's exactly what happened. So let's have a look at uh, what actually happened. This is when I planned the trade at this area of demand. I marked this area of demand and placed my entry at 197.85 and kept my stop loss you know just below that about 1.8 rupees below my entry price just below the area of demand so if we look at what happened on this day here as you can see um, <clears throat> the market closed somewhere here far away from my entry price Okay, now you, you wouldn't really expect that price to suddenly collapse into this area of demand, right? So most people wouldn't have even thought of placing a buy order. But what I do is I place my buy order using a bracket order early in the morning before 9.30 itself. So that's where I could catch these kind of trades. So as you can see here, what happened is right in the early morning price opened itself with a gap down. And then it came into this area of demand and then immediately reversed and started moving higher. And very soon I got my target there. Okay, it just took about one, two, three, four, five candles. So five candles is nothing but one, an hour and a 15 minutes. So I got my target in the, within an hour and 15 minutes. So identifying these kind of areas of demand and supply uh, help a lot in your trading because you don't really need to you know be always in the market so you we are just waiting to see when price would come into this area of demand and then prices just reverse from there so uh, this the first stack of buy orders would all have got ex, you know would all got exhausted and the second stack of buy orders which was inside this demand area caused the price to move higher Let us now look at the chart of Nifty itself to see if there's any trading that can be done in the Nifty. So this is the daily chart of the Nifty. I hope you guys remember this demand zone which I had marked. So that still stands. It has not been tested. Price has never come into that area of demand. So this demand zone still stays where it's supposed to be. So what happened after we had the last video in the last five days, markets came down and reversed and started moving up again. So in this movement, there are no new areas of demand or supply that have been created. Okay, so we have this, uh, this area here, we have a rally and a drop and uh, it is not exactly an area of supply. I wouldn't call this an area of supply. And uh, you should not really try to take any short positions because market is right now at historic highs. So the area of supply is not really there. If you go to the higher time frame, you could see it very well. And so this is a weekly chart. Absolutely, you can see that there is no supply anywhere on the weekly chart. This is the monthly chart. Okay, again, we don't have any supply in the monthly chart. So coming back to the daily, there is no opportunity to go short anywhere right here. How about uh, going long? Is there any opportunity to go long? Now here we have a, a drop 
a base and a rally. So this definitely is a demand zone, a newly formed demand zone. But is it a good idea to go long in this demand zone? So I just mark this demand zone. As you can see, this demand zone does not have much strength at all, right? So it has only moved slightly. So we can't really call this a very good demand zone because it doesn't have much strength. Secondly, this demand zone has been tested because once market went above the zone and price came back into the zone and now moved up again. So this demand zone has already been tested. So do not try to take any long positions in this demand zone because it doesn't have strength and the zone has already been tested. So where do we have demand then in that case? So the only place we still have demand is right here where I have earlier marked. So only if price comes all the way down till here, then only I'm going to look at uh, buying anything or I would also wait for any new levels to be formed in this, uh, you know, on the daily chart. And then we can take a call about trading anywhere on those levels. So this is the uh, analysis for Nifty for this week. So guys, that's all we have time for today. Uh, it was really nice talking to all of you. Uh, head on to the website that is adventureterrainventures.co.in where you will get all the information regarding the stock market model street course and its modules. And, uh, and so it was nice talking to all of you. Oral David here signing out. Have a nice day and a nice week. Thank you.